The Warren Occult Museum in Monroe, Connecticut is a shrine to the weird, the creepy, and the downright bizarre. The items on display were carefully curated by Ed and Lorraine Warren, two of America's most famous paranormal investigators, and it's full of things that defy belief. Get ready to be shocked, confused, and haunted because these are 15 of the most terrifying objects of the notorious Warren Family Occult Museum. Before we begin, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos every day. With that being said, let's begin. <sighs> Number 15. Satanic Idol this satanic idol was described by Lorraine Warren as one of the most terrible paranormal artifacts she had ever come across. According to the story that accompanies it, it was first discovered by a man as he was walking through a forest and felt a strange compulsion to change direction. When he turned around, he saw this idol sat by a tree, and when he ran to take a closer look, it felt as if it was sucking his life energy from him. Despite the effects he described, he took it home with him, but strange things started happening around the house. Convinced the noises and moving objects were related to the objects he had found in the woods, he got rid of it as soon as he could, and it came into the possession of the Warrens. Similar effects were noticed by the couple when they put it in their own basement. Lorraine said she woke up in the middle of the night on several occasions and was levitating in the air and had also been catatonic for days on end, something that happened the first night after acquiring the object. It's now in the museum beneath a series of enchanted paintings, and because of this location, it's believed that the mysterious powers within the object have been contained. For now, number 14. The Conjuring Mirror this is the conjuring mirror, said by the couple to be one of the most dangerous objects they've ever come across. If you want to conjure up spirits from the other side, then this is what you'll need, as the reflective glass helps them to breach the divide. It allows you to communicate and on occasions interact with the spirit, but it's because of this that it comes with a major warning. Unless you're experienced with conjuring and know how to control whatever force emerges, you won't ever know for certain whether the force behind the mirror is good or evil. There's a risk that you could release something vengeful, and as the person who lets it out, you'd be the first that it took its anger out on. Number 13. Shadow Doll While it may not have the most frightening name, it just takes one look at the Shadow Doll to realize that it's more than earned its place in a museum of occult artifacts. The origins of this doll are unknown, but it was created for one very specific purpose, to extinguish the life of anyone who looks at a photograph of it. Before you worry, the legend says that it's a printed photo you need to see, so viewing a version of it on your screen shouldn't put your life at risk, but nonetheless, make sure to let us know if you start to feel weird after seeing it. It was also used as an important centerpiece to satanic rituals and was cursed by black magic in a process that involved covering it up in the ground with bones of humans and animals. Those who have visited the museum say that the doll has the unmistakable stench of death surrounding it, and it seems to stare back at you, waiting for its chance to take yet another life. If it latches onto your soul and decides you're no longer worthy to walk on this earth, it may even visit you in your dreams, and with a blink of its eyes, can stop your heart cold. Needless to say, no one has lived to tell the tale after angering this doll, so if you ever see it face to face, treat it with the respect it deserves. Number 12. African Fertility Doll This is an Akuba, an African fertility doll that was carved either in Ghana or a region very close to the country. Made out of wood, it and others like it are designed to be carried on a woman's back who wants to bear a child and grants them good fortune. As an extra bonus, using one of these dolls also guarantees that the child will be attractive and, if it's a female, will have their pick of men. When the person carrying the Akuba falls pregnant, it's important to ritually cleanse and take care of it because if it becomes damaged or dirty during the pregnancy, it could pass on a problem to the unborn child. Different tribes in the regions around Ghana make their fertility dolls slightly differently. The Ashanti people, for example, carve theirs with large disc-shaped heads while other tribes focus on other physical features. In recent times, the dolls have been mass-produced to sell to tourists, but this one in the Warren Museum is an original and one that had been used for a long time for its true purpose. Could you ever see yourself using something like this to bring good fortune upon a child? Do you think there's any truth to the claimed effects of carrying it on your back? Make sure to let us know in the comments section below. Number 11. Vampire Coffin no collection of the occult would be complete without an artifact from one of the most well-known demonic creatures, and the family managed to find something very rare, the coffin of a vampire. But this isn't some ancient artifact supposedly used by Dracula. Instead, they claimed it had come from the home of a modern-day vampire. The Warrens were convinced that vampirism is more prolific now than it ever has been before, and even claimed to have had countless conversations with some in order to learn more about them. This coffin was given to them by a vampire who had traded up to a better version, so luckily for them, there's not currently an evil entity still laying claim to it. Do you believe vampires actually exist? And with this coffin's history and former use, would you be able to lie in here with the lid closed 
How about staying the whole night in one? Number 10. Child tombstones. Satanic rituals often involve the sacrifice of living beings to encourage demonic spirits to do what they're asked and usually what's required is a small animal like a goat or a pig. Performing more intense conjurings require a bigger sacrifice though and for the most powerful spells you need a willing child to take part. You might think no one would be crazy enough to kill a child to enact their desires but the Warrens were convinced otherwise. In their museum they had three child tombstones, each of which they claim was from the burial of a youngster who had been sacrificed as part of a ritual. It's a horrifying thought if true and certainly makes the perfect addition to the museum. You have to wonder what was important enough to offer the souls of three kids to the underworld though and more importantly did it work. Number 9. The Haunted Organ One of the largest objects in the museum is this beautiful organ, one that you'd be hard pressed to walk past without trying one of the keys to see if it still works but this is no ordinary organ and as with everything in the museum you'd be best to keep your hands to yourself. It's over 100 years old and has passed between a number of owners before it reached the museum. According to legend, a woman was murdered on the organ by an intruder one night and her spirit still resides within it. The previous owners were said to be tormented by her ghost, who would choose to play somber music on the organ at the most inopportune times. They'd have friends over for dinner, be trying to go to sleep, or beginning to get intimate, and then suddenly the vibe would immediately be ruined by the music that came from the pipes. They were glad to be rid of it when the Warrens took it, and to this day, the instrument plays itself at unpredictable moments. If you're in the museum and you hear a note, it's said to be a sign that the ghoul is trying to communicate with you, and you'd be left with the decision of whether you dare try and talk back. Number 8. Shrunken Heads In various cultures around the world, shrunken heads are used as trophies, for rituals, and even for trade. They're particularly common throughout the Amazon rainforest, where tribal leaders even wear several around their neck as a warning to anyone who encroaches on their territory. The heads are made from real human heads, which are either taken from important members of society who have died or prisoners who have been punished. To make one, you first remove the head from the neck and make an incision behind the ear and remove skin and flesh from the cranium. A special type of red seed is put underneath the nose, the lips are sewn shut, then the flesh is removed from the skull bone. A wooden ball is put inside to help it retain its shape and then it's put into a pot of boiling water along with a blend of herbs. Finally, the now shrunken head is dried over hot rocks and sand and care is taken to mold it to retain human-like features. The longer it's boiled, the smaller it will become and it requires a skilled hand to do properly. While there are countless forgeries on the market to try and capitalize on people's interest in these objects, the one in the Moran Museum is a real one that they acquired directly from a tribe in Ecuador. They believe it brought a protective aura to their home and is an important part of the balance they try to maintain between good and evil spirits throughout the museum. Number 7. A Brick from Borley Rectory with so many ancient structures, there are plenty of supposedly haunted places in England. But the one building that's said to be the most haunted of all is called Borley Rectory. It was built in 1862 and from the moment the first occupants moved in, it was believed to be inhabited by spirits. It's thought this is because the house was built on the site of a former Benedictine monastery where a monk was accused of having an affair with one of the nuns. He was executed and she was bricked up alive within the walls of the building. But even though it had been demolished centuries before Borley Rectory was built, their spirits were still trapped on our plane of existence. Paranormal experiences are constantly reported in the area, with people feeling cold chills, objects seemingly moving on their own and voices echoing out from behind the trees. Staying the night is said to be a particularly harrowing experience and the Warrens were really keen to get their own piece of memorabilia from the house. They eventually managed to get hold of a brick that was removed during renovation and it takes pride of place in the museum. They themselves visited the house to investigate the stories and returned to America convinced everything they heard was true. Do you think there's any merit to the stories and do you think you're brave enough to visit Borley Rectory? Number 6. Haunted Masks Masks play an important part in occult rituals as they allow practitioners to rid themselves of their identities on this plane of existence to more easily communicate with dark spirits. They're also common throughout cultures of history that have performed sacrificial rituals as it also helps to distance yourself from the gruesome acts that you're performing. Because of their association with sacrifices and other morbid events, these masks are often thought to be haunted but the ones in the Warren Museum are particularly creepy. The couple said that as soon as they'd put the masks on display, they noticed weird happenings around their house. They have quite a wide selection with ones that have been acquired from around the world. There are some from South America, one from Africa and one that's more than 500 years old that was found in the US. Could it be possible that these masks contain the spirits of those who were killed by someone wearing them or did they trap the spirits of the executioner once they had died because the atrocities they had committed prevented them from traveling to the afterlife? The Warrens were certain these were haunted and refused to ever try to wear them themselves, no matter how tempting that might have been. Number 5. 
Human skulls. It's impossible to know how many humans have been sacrificed throughout history as gifts to gods or spirits, but it's likely the number would horrify us if we ever knew the truth. Large pits have been found from ancient cultures throughout the world that are full of human remains, and there are still places today that make human offerings in the hope that it may improve the weather, crop yield, or summon entities to do their bidding. During their time investigating paranormal activity, the Warrens came across countless human skulls that were the remains of people that had been treated in horrific ways. They were also offered quite a a few over the years to be part of their museum, and they built up a collection of their own. Their particular interest were skulls that had been used in satanic rituals, so all of their skulls are thought to have been involved in attempts to raise demons. Of course, it's unclear whether these sacrifices were successful or done in vain, and it's quite possible that the skulls remain spiritually linked with whoever benefited from the person's death. Do you believe that sacrificing a human can bring good fortune from a higher or lower power? And if so, do you think it's worth the cost in some circumstances? Would you be creeped out if you were in the same room as one of these? And could you ever have one in your house like the Warrens did, even if it was put away in the basement? Number 4. Ouija Board If you're keen to make contact with the dead, then a Ouija board is one of the easiest ways to start. By holding an object over the board and concentrating on your instinctual sense of the other realm, you can receive answers to any questions that you ask. They're a staple in any horror movie and are great at parties, but there's a serious side to them and you must be careful not to anger the spirits that you're communicating with. Through their travels, the Warrens came across hundreds of Ouija boards in all sorts of different shapes and designs. They regularly used them to contact entities on the other side and built up a large collection of different boards of their own. A selection of them are on display in the museum, but apparently they have far more or kept away in storage. Have you ever tried a Ouija board and do you think they can actually be used to communicate with the dead or are they simply a parlor trick? Make sure to tell us your experiences and let us know what you think. Number 3. Psychic Photographs Psychic photography is used to take an image, but because the film is sensitive to energy that is imperceivable to the human eye, once developed, it can show the presence of an entity that wasn't apparent at the time. The Warren Museum has a large collection of these images, each of which is thought to show an apparition or an energy source that proves that something otherworldly was caught on camera. They can take on the form of human shapes hovering around other people, strange lights, orb light blots on the image, or clouds of hazy light. Skeptics, of course, blame most of these phenomena as happening due to imperfections in the film, but many of the ones in the Warren Museum have been analyzed by experts who see no way that the things depicted in the image could have shown up unless they were actually there in real life. It's more difficult to get images like this now that most people use digital photography, but take a look back at any photos that have been developed from film around your house and see if you've inadvertently picked up an image of a ghost. You might just be surprised at what you find. Maybe you already know you've captured one or still don't believe that psychic photographs are true at all. Make sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Number 2. Toy Monkey the experiences of the Warren family were the inspiration for the movies in the Conjuring franchise, and one of the most famous objects in the museum was featured in the most recent release titled Annabelle Comes Home. The toy monkey isn't as fun as it may seem at first, as the Warrens were convinced that it was cursed by some mysterious entity. But why would someone place a curse on a children's toy? The answer is supposedly because the family who once owned it had mistreated their daughter. They kept her locked in the basement, often left her on her own for days on end and often forgot to even give her food or water. The only object she was allowed in her isolation was this monkey and she'd spend hours on end watching it walk across the floor. One tragic day, the parents opened the locked room and found that their daughter had died of starvation. They quickly removed everything from the room, including the toy monkey, and then blocked up the basement so no one would ever find evidence of what had happened there. Soon after, the monkey began to switch on by itself and would clash its symbols whenever they turned their backs on it. They believed that the toy had been possessed by the spirit of their daughter and she was using the monkey to get her own back on them. They never sought any help because to do so would be to admit what they had done, but they wrote their thoughts down as a means to try and deal with their situation. Eventually after they died, the new homeowners moved in and found the monkey, the notes, and the blocked up basement. They called the authorities to remove the remains of the girl and got rid of all of the objects that had been left behind. The toy and the story that had been written by the parents made their way into the hands of the Warren family, who realized immediately that it was the perfect addition for their museum. Number 1. Samurai Armor the legendary samurai were skilled warriors in Japan during feudal times. They had meticulously crafted swords and durable but flexible armor and would be called upon to settle disputes between warring factions. As a result, samurai were involved in dealing with the most 
treacherous threats, both those born of our world and those that come from somewhere else. Japanese legend speaks of many different spirits, and the samurai were closely linked with preventing them from slaughtering civilians. The Warrens, during a visit to Japan, acquired this samurai armor, but rather than being involved in a battle with an evil being, this particular armor is thought to be haunted as a result of a more tragic tale. Apparently, while fending off invaders from a distant land, the samurai who was wearing this armor at the time accidentally plunged his sword into the heart of a young girl. She looked up at him as the life drained out of her, and her soul was bound to him as punishment for his actions. The samurai died soon after, and the armor was passed down to his son. He tried it on once and was immediately overcome with a deep sense of grief, so he took it off and never touched it again. The Warrens brought it back to America to display in their museum, but to this day, not a single person has dared try it on. Which of these did you find to be the most terrifying? Can you think of an ordinary explanation for anything you've seen here? Make sure to let us know in the comments section. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.